Did you know you could get hacked by a picture? Yeah, if I served this malicious picture here to you and it rendered in your browser, there was a long period of time where it would be able to crash your browser or even give me remote code execution on your browser. And this bug was actually being used by the NSO group to remotely exploit iPhones with a zero-click exploit that took advantage of a bug in the libwebp library. Now, this bug is so crazy, and I haven't made a video about it, so I wanted to talk to you guys about it today. It is literally one of the most insane bugs that I've ever seen from a couple perspectives, and we'll talk about those in this video. Also, hi, my name is Low Level Learning. I make videos about programming and software security and cybersecurity. So if you like those things or you want to just hang out with me, hit that sub button. I really appreciate it. When you open a picture, what happens? The picture has to be interpreted by some piece of code to render it onto your screen. At the end of the day, a picture is just a binary file format that will render an image to the screen. The binary file format contains things like the data of the picture that are compressed into different blobs, things about the encoding of that color, maybe metadata about the picture itself or comments in that picture, as well as a number of other things. You can actually go look at the JPEG and the PNG format and go read about all the different features that those specs have. And for every spec there is, there has to be a piece of software that parses it. And just like any piece of software, that software can have software vulnerabilities. Now, the libwebp library is meant to parse the webp file format, a newer format for images and video that allow you to encode more data effectively into a better compressed format. And just like anything else, code that is new typically has vulnerabilities that haven't been found yet. Now, an interesting feature of the WebP format and ultimately the source of the bug is the ability to do lossless compression. The idea being you have a bunch of data that's really, really large and you're able to compress it down to a smaller size. Now, in a lot of file formats, there is lossy compression where the compression of that data results in the loss of information. You're able to remove information to make your file format smaller, but you can't expand that data back to what it used to be. There is loss in your information. By using an algorithm called Huffman coding, the lib WebP format is able to do lossless compression on information stored in the image. Now, the way it does this is via a very complex algorithm that I'm not gonna spend a lot of time talking about in this video. What Huffman coding allows you to do is store the statistical likelihood of a particular data value to occur and assigning a code to it. By doing this, you're able to inform the decompressor of what codes mean what thing and allow you to store more information into a compressed file format. For example, in this example, Huffman coding here, we have the character space who appears seven times in the in the data. So we assign this code to it here. It means every time you see the bit sequence one, one, one or seven, you replace that with the eight bit value of space, which is hex 20. By doing this, you're able to save a lot of room in your file format. Now, the problem with this is that if we included all of the statistical information about the image in one tree, that in and of itself would be very big. And in order to do that in a way that is lossless would contain a lot of size. There'd be a lot of room required to store that tree inside the image. So the wet libwebp format recursively takes the tree and then compresses that down via Huffman encoding and does that a couple of times over and over again to a point where you have it as small as you can get it to recreate the, think about like Maristroika dolls, uh, those, you know, those trees and produce the image as the way that it was found before it got compressed. Now, the issue with this, the reason that there's a bug here is that when you build a Huffman table, there is no length check on the buffer size where you're storing the table. So effectively, if you're able to create the right Huffman encoding table that once it recursively unpacks itself to the correct size using the correct tree values, and again, this is not a simple algorithm. If you're able to do this, you're able to create a buffer overflow in the BSS of the libwebp library. Now, this buffer overflow eventually leads to a double free, which is a very common heap exploitation technique that allows a user to take over the status of the heap and use that to enable remote code execution. Now, you're probably wondering, how did we miss this bug? Like, what went so wrong that no one saw this bug in public? Like, we have plenty of projects that are doing open source software analysis. The biggest one that's most well known is Google's OSS 
fuzz. It's open source software fuzzing. If you're not familiar with what fuzzing is, fuzz testing is basically this way of taking software and essentially screaming at it and just making sure that when it fails, it fails gracefully. If you hand it data that it is not meant to process, it handles the error values in a way that does not expose the user to remote code execution via either memory corruption or some kind of logic error. And there are literally hundreds of projects that are integrated into open source fuzz where effectively you produce a project, you put it into OSS fuzz, and then on the cloud, it is consistently fuzzing, throwing bad data at it, and it will inform the developer if it finds a issue in your code. Now, what makes this bug so insane is the amount of things that have to go right to get the exploit to work and the amount of things that have to go wrong for this bug to have been caught in OSS fuzz and I think why it was able to remain unseen for so long. And if you go back to the story of how this bug got caught, it only got caught because there was a lab that detected suspicious behavior on the iPhone of an individual employed by a Washington DC based civil society organization. Basically, the NSO group was doing political espionage and a uh, threat research organization saw their iPhone being exploited. But if it hadn't been caught in the wild, kind of like the X Z bug, this bug could have just sat in code for a long time. Now, how did we not catch it in OSS fuzz? Well, the reason is that it's such a difficult bug to reproduce. It's almost impossible to produce a Huffman encoding table that when it's unpacked over and over and over again to the top level, it overflows this table. And you'll even see in Ben Hawk's write-up of how they went through and did the technical triage of this bug, they recognized that there was an issue. They saw that there was no bounds check on the buffer that they put the Huffman table into but how do you create a Huffman encoding table in an image in a way that allows you to effectively recursively unpack to get the to get the buffer overflow condition to happen? And so he and his team had some really cool visualization tools here, one of them being that they're showing the Huffman encoding table and a bit, basically they're trying to visualize how can they make the Huffman encoding table as large as possible by expanding out this graph structure. Uh, and how can they use that to leverage the buffer overflow? And the reason this bug got missed for so long is because of how hard it is to create a Huffman encoding table that enables a buffer overflow. The researcher M Misty Mintcop, I guess, uh, <laughs> wrote this piece of code here called craft.c that allows us to create an image that is able to exploit the buffer overflow, right? If you look at the amount of code here required to do the math to actually produce a Huffman encoding table that violates this constraint, it's non-trivial. Like there is a significant amount of code, I'm only halfway through it right now, to produce a Huffman encoding table that when recursively unpacked, creates the exploit condition. So we can see here at the very, very end, they show how if they make this the table here, the ultimate unpacked size is 414 and 526, which is bigger than the uh, size of the array, which is pretty interesting. So what are we left with a simple one pixel by one pixel image that has no actual image data, but contains a Huffman encoding table that when expanded enables a buffer overflow that later could be used to create a double free and eventually take over your computer. Absolutely insane of a bug. I have not been able to stop thinking about it since it happened. Now, this bug is from September of last year. It has been patched, so likely if you're updating your browsers like you should be, you have a new, new version of Chrome, new version of Firefox, you are not vulnerable to this. But it begs an interesting question about libraries that sit dormant in certain projects. I know from personal research that there are projects still on the internet right now, maybe image converter libraries, for example, I wanna convert this WebP to a PNG that haven't been touched in a long time and are still using the vulnerable version of libwebp from months ago. Anyway, that's it for now. I hope you found this bug as interesting as I did, and I hope that you're able to stop thinking about it because I personally can't. Uh, if you like this video, do me a favor, hit the sub button, and then go watch this next video that I think you'll like as well. Thanks.